there's a massive out of school population. Half of primary school age children, 1.3 million basically don't go to school. There's an extremely high repetition grade uh, since grade one. It's a hugely uh, disproportionate dropout rate, uh, especially between grades and four and seven. Uh, and very few children uh, making it through to secondary education. You have gender disparities at all levels. It's, uh, it's shocking to see, and the government is very much aware of that, that only 1.6% of the female population actually attend secondary education. And you know there's this dramatic statistic whereby the chances of a girl reaching the age of 18 to die in childbirth is three times higher than finishing a secondary education. This is, I mean, this is really, really sad. So, um, and of course, you have an extremely limited coverage of uh, secondary and tertiary ex education. You know that 60% of the entire country is not even accessible by road during the rainy season. Uh, and then, of course, you also have huge social cultural problems that many parents, especially from nomadic communities, so far haven't had the chance of appreciating the benefit of education for their girls in particular, but even for their boys, because they want to use them as, of course, assets to uh, to herd the cattle uh, or contribute to the survival of the family, etc. So this, together with lack of educational infrastructure, um, feeds into that level of uh, underachievement when it comes to reaching the MDGs, both on um, on the primary um, in, in enrollment rates uh, and, of course, on making it more balanced in gender terms. extend the coverage of the educational facilities and infrastructure, notably by constructing and rehabilitating schools uh, in the rural areas. But also, uh, it's, what is very important, is to train teachers. Uh, there is a high proportion of teachers serving at primary school level who just made it through primary schools themselves. So there's a tremendous need to improve their capacity to become qualified teachers. And of course, you need to provide textbooks. I think one of our member states, the UK right now, has undertaken the commitment of providing, I think, up to 10 million uh, copies of textbooks. We do the state building contract, we basically put aside 80 million euros, which benefits the education and health workers. It's basically a, a ring fence budget support to support the salaries of the teachers and midwives and nurses working throughout the country, throughout the fiscal year 13-14 that they receive their salaries, continue to providing services to children um, and people uh, attending hospitals. In addition, we are planning something very unique. We want to address the capacity constraints of young nomads. So we want to provide mobile training units to uh, the nomadic communities and provide them with literacy skills, numer numerical skills, life skills, but also professional skills in case they want to transit to more uh, agro uh, farming activities or other activities which could support their livelihood. And that is very interesting because uh, that would allow them uh, diversifying the economy. In addition, we want to address the problem of, uh, of girls. Um, uh, and see to what extent we can, through education grants and specific programs facilitating girls' education, uh, but also this includes also civic education because you need to sensitize, of course, the parents uh, in particular. And we want to also improve the capacity of the local and state administrations to better monitor the quality of what is going on in the school. Do the teachers attend? Um, what is the quality of the teaching, and maybe also introduce some social accountability mechanisms, meaning why can't parents feed back into uh, the system at county and state level to tell them what they think about the teachers. This kind of feedback loop is a very important and innovative way of testing the quality.